My genius. You know, I, I go through these phases where I get really hungry to learn more and fast. And I start to read. You know how I read one book a week? Sometimes I end up reading four a week. But I've been thinking a lot about self-judgment. I've been thinking about the self-judgment because of how strong the human domestication really is. You know? We go through, we go through um, education when we're children, right? And the education system is the human domestication, according to the three books, the last three books that I read, the, the Four Agreements, the Fifth Agreement, and the Mastery of Love. So it is the education that trains you to become fake, to become inauthentic, to, be, to, to lie to yourself, to take on the beliefs of other people, whatever they have been given, and you take those on. They become your agreements. They become your laws, right? When somebody tells you good boy or bad boy, they'll reward you, they'll punish you like a puppy, like a domestication of an animal. And sometimes you resist, but you realize you're a baby and that's not going to work. And so you start to take in these beliefs, right? Your mommy and daddy are heroes, right? You might look up at, you look up to one of your cousins or neighbors or teacher, and you start to accept what they're telling you to do, how to be. So there's two ways to look at this. You start to create this picture of perfection, of what a perfect version of you would look like, right? So you create this picture. And then there's this constant information overload of how you need to behave, how you need to look, how you need to eat, how you need to behave at home, how you need to behave at school because home rules are different than school rules. Rules when you go to neighbor's house are different. Rules when you go to an uncle's home are different. Rules when you go to the Boy Scouts are different. So what ends up happening is you create this multiple personality disorder within you. Within the human domestication, you start to establish these different masks. I'm gonna wear this mask at the Boy Scouts, this mask at the church, this mask at home, and this mask here and here and here and here and there. And you start to establish these masks. And wherever you go, you pick a specific mask and you go. And you're being inauthentic everywhere. Have you ever realized if you do something that others would consider wrong. There's no such thing as wrong. And if a sleepwalker is listening, they're going to think, what are you talking about? Yes, there's no such thing as wrong. <laughs> All right. There's just... Anyway, that's another topic for another day. Have you ever done something that was, that other people thought was wrong and you defended yourself. You protected yourself, you defended yourself, and you said, and, and, and you, you go back home. And the moment you go home and you're alone, you look at yourself and now you're judging. You're feeling shame, you're feeling guilt. Even though you shouldn't feel any of those things, all of those are just agreements, all of those are just programmings. But because you do that, you're poisoning yourself. When somebody says, you are, I don't know, whatever the judgment is, right? You're a liar. You are, you're, whatever the judgment is. What they're showing you in that moment is they're showing you their story. They're showing you their world because everybody lives in their own bubble. 
Everybody lives in their own world, their own reality. And their reality is vastly different than your reality. But it doesn't feel that way because they seem to be here in your world. They seem to appear in your reality. So it feels like they're in your reality. So they must be sharing the reality that, you're, that you are. No. Your inner beliefs, your inner book of law, all of those agreements that you have accepted. We have made thousands of agreements with people, with our parents, with our peers, with our coworkers, bosses, churches, Boy Scouts, neighbors. You know, the same person that you see when you go to get groceries, the same person that you go fishing with, your hunting buddies, whatever it may be. Right? Your employees, your superiors, your subordinates, whatever it might be. Everyone has different agreements that you have made with. There's different masks, different personalities. Sometimes you're too stern, assertive, non. You let go. Your masculine, feminine energies go up and down as you deal with different people. And that's different with everybody. And why am I telling you that? I want to, I want to show you the complexity of the reality in your own world. Now imagine everyone has that, but their own version of it. It's complicated enough in your own reality for you to be managing all this. And I don't want you to manage all this. I want you to unlearn all this. I want you to undomesticate yourself. Where you judge nobody. Nobody. What other people do that feels bad is just them showing you their world, their story, their reality, their personality. You cannot take it personal. I'm burping. The moment somebody judges you and you take it personally, there's poison in them that they have generated and they're offering it to you. And the moment you take it personally, you have taken that poison away from them and it makes them feel better. Imagine um, a partner, right? A stay-at-home partner, wife, and she's upset. She's uncomfortable. Maybe she's been through some traumas that she took personal. Someone hurt her feelings. Maybe, you know, trauma from her past relationships or maybe trauma from her family or she, lo lo you know, she lost loved ones, whatever it may be. And it's just making her feel negative and upset and resentful and all this. And it's just this poison. I was, you know what? Maybe I would feel better if my husband gave me more time. He's working too much or he's this and this and that. And he comes home and she just dumps, vomits it all over him. What has she done? She has offered him to take her poison. So now he takes all that poison and reacts and gets angry. That he's tired, he's been working all day, he's been dealing with bosses, you know, he's not getting a promotion, you know, the gas prices has gone up, all this, whatever. So he's got his issues going on. So he reacts, and the fact that she brought out a reaction out of him makes her feel good. But now he has to get even. So now he's going to bring up something to hurt her. And it just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Not realizing that when you undomesticate yourself, you're the, you burn the book of law that you have created. Break all the agreements that you have made with people. What is left? You have now burned off and you have now taken care of everything that that is not you. Because most of the agreements you made, you made as a child. You just accepted it because you looked up to people. And whatever they said you should do, you just did it. So when you undomesticate yourself, you let it burn off what is not love anymore. You burn off what is not the authentic you. What is the authentic you? Pure love. Now imagine something. There's a, there's a saying that if you feel too happy or if you feel too miserable or if you feel too angry, no matter what it is, too much positive emotions or the negative emotions, none of those are you. The pure love that is you is very subtle. It is just an observer. It is just an awareness. And yes, it feels like love. Yes, it feels really good, but it is not the love that you read about. 
It is not the love that you would see when you watch the notebook. It is much more deeper than that. It is pure ecstasy when you just watch. You just get into this trance where suddenly everything is you. The boundaries, the walls, the boundaries between things and you sort of start to fall apart. When you start to feel and touch the divinity within you, suddenly all the misery and all the parties, all of those were not you. What is you is very stable, very subtle, very peaceful, very complete, completely whole. When you're whole, you're not going one way or another. You just are. You're just it. What happens when you do that? When, what happens when you stay in that state of being? You fall into wholeness. You, 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 your field and your aura starts to cleanse itself just by you being in that state of being. You start to create this beautiful coherence in your field. Your field starts to expand because the, the more coherent the information in your field, the more you can allow your field to expand. And when you expand your field, now you have more control on your hologram. Now you have more control on your state of being of the future realities that you want to experience. When somebody is negative to you, and you don't feed that negativity by defending yourself. When you don't feed that negativity by fighting back, giving them a reaction, what are you doing? You're starving it. Somebody's offering you poison and you're not taking it. Somebody wants to rile you up. Somebody wants to, you know, it happens to me. <laughs> there are people in my life that just, they just want a reaction out of me. And I just don't feed it anymore. I love my life. I love my reality that I'm living. And the heaven on earth that I'm creating internally is slowly projecting out into the world. And if you don't fit into that world, I'll just walk away from you in peace. I'm not going to bother you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to attack you. I'm just going to walk away. Because you can't hurt someone without hurting yourself. You can't judge someone without judging yourself. So when you, you know, you start to, you know, you realize that you're a sleepwalker, then you start to undomesticate yourself. This is the warrior phase where there's a lot of internal conflict. There's a lot of internal chaos. And, and this war can only be fought by you. And if you judge someone, if you think someone has done you wrong, and if you think someone has done something bad to you, you're in phase one. You're a sleepwalker. Is that hard to hear? Well, stop judging people. Everybody is always doing the best they can. Everyone is dreaming their own dream. And their dream, their internal state of being is so different than yours. They're experiencing the input of their own electrical impulses of the nervous system that they have. And based on their internal state of being, only the information that is matching their internal state of being is going in, everything else is getting rejected out. So almost nobody out here in the world understands your dream. But if I judge you, because your dream is not the same as my dream, that's foolish, isn't it? Silly, isn't it? That's why people say, all blame is a fool's game. If you blame anybody, you're just being foolish. If you blame anyone for anything ever, you're being foolish. But imagine this. Yeah, it sounds silly. But if you don't blame anyone, then you're just an observer. 
and you're just this awareness. And when you stay in that state, you get to this pure bliss. You get to this pure bliss. I'm going to keep drumming this onto you guys. There's a lot of people that I know in many communities that I'm a part of. You know, there are people that have been to some retreats. There are people that claim that they've had some level of awakening and they're just miserable. They're just sad, angry, you know, they just want everyone else to feel guilty. They're this victim mindset, poor me, poor me, poor me. And I just see them and there's nothing I can do. It's their dream. They're living a different dream than me. There's nothing I can do. You can't change people's lives. You can't change people's minds. You can only speak the truth. And if they can find that opening in their dream, in their state of being, in their heart, if they can calm their brain waves, if they can just allow that some part of truth. You, you know, have you ever read a book or listened to a podcast and something in your heart at some point in some statement or some quote or some lesson or some story, suddenly your heart says, oh, of course, yes, yes, yes. And something in you just instantly changes. Because you were listening with such an open mind and open heart that there was something that your heart found to be the truth for you in that moment, in that time, and it grabbed onto it. That's why it is so important to have a calm heart, calm brain waves, non judgmental energy, so that when the truth does flow through you in your life, your heart will say, Yes, that's it. Because your heart always knows. Your brain's thinking, sure, but the heart knows. So if you stay in the state of allowing, in the state of surrender, you don't have to look for truth. The truth, as it flows right by you, your heart will grab onto it and you'll know. You'll have those light, mom light bulb moments. You'll have that, oh, of course, of course, yes. And you have these moments of unbelievable clarity. Changes you, changes your energy, changes your coherence changes your electromagnetic imprints that we're constantly emitting out into the world. We're constantly talking to the universe. Let me know what you think.